Hey guys, it's me, Tom. Today's video is on predicting single and double replacement reactions. So in this lesson, let's talk about predicting single and double replacement reactions. Here's a single replacement reaction between sodium chloride and hydrogen gas. Here's a question. Will these react to form hydrochloric acid and sodium metal? Well, the reaction will occur if, and really only if, hydrogen gas can displace sodium in that sodium chloride compound. Let's see. Will the hydrogen displace the sodium? We can look at the activity series to determine this. So here's the activity series, and here are a couple people. One at the top, Brad looks like he's very active, we'll call him sodium, and well, hydrogen looks like Elmer Fudd is not too active. That'd be hydrogen. So since sodium, or Brad, is more active than hydrogen, hydrogen, or Elmer, won't displace sodium, or Brad, in the sodium chloride compound. No reaction will occur. But, you know, we know now that the reverse reaction will occur. So have a look. We know that if you put solid sodium and hydrochloric acid together, you do actually get aqueous sodium chloride and hydrogen gas. Make sure we balance the reaction, and you say this one really will occur. Why? Because sodium is more active than hydrogen. It's higher up that activity series. Double replacement reactions. We can predict them too. The question is how to do it. Well, here's an example. This has led to nitrate and potassium iodide, both aqueous. What will happen? If you react them together, we can get lead to iodide and potassium nitrate. We'll just check the solubility table. You can see that potassium is soluble with everything. And you can see that lead and iodide together are insoluble. That'll be a precipitate. This table or set of rules tells whether the ions are more attracted to one another, and therefore they form a precipitate, or whether they're more attracted to water and stay in the solution as ions. Let's now see the total ionic and net ionic equations. Have a look and see. There's our formula equation from above, it's the lead nitrate potassium iodide one. The total ionic equation will show all the aqueous ionic compounds, the dissociated ions, dissociated. Here we have the lead and the nitrate. Now we'll just dissociate those potassium and iodide ions, show them as ions, they're in solution, all separate. Those things will react and we'll get that lead to iodide, that's the solid one from above, and the two potassium and two nitrate ions. Remember, those are aqueous. Notice all the aqueous ones are shown dissociated into ions, and the solid lead to iodide is shown as a solid. The ones that are not changed, like these nitrates and these potassium ions, we call them spectators, because they enter the reaction and leave without undergoing any changes at all. They're really uninvolved in the reaction. They do have a purpose, just to bring their partners to the reaction. Nothing happens to them. The net ionic equation is that total one above, having removed the spectators. This reaction shows what actually happened. So. The lead 2 ion and the two iodide ions, they snap together and form that lead 2 iodide precipitate. So that's the whole story. Have a look at single replacement and double replacement reactions from the point of view of activity series, for the single replacements, and solubility rules for the double replacement reactions. Thanks so much, and see you soon. Have a look at the next video in the playlist for more on the topic, and stay tuned for our next lesson in Chemistry 11, lesson number 5, Density and Unit Analysis. YouTube channel. It's awesome. So like, comment, and subscribe.